morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, May 20th, and I'm going to finish reading the book that I began on Monday. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book. We ended on the letter M, which was for Monarch Butterfly. I'll show you that picture again because it's one of my favorite butterflies. And now we're moving on to N. N is for no seums. No seums is a word for tiny insects that are almost impossible to see. They are flies that are really called midges. They can make people miserable because they bite. I don't like these. <laughs> There's a few things in this book I don't like. Lots of things I do like. O is for orb weaver. The spiders that make round orb shaped webs are called orb weavers. Many people are frightened by spiders, but most of them will not hurt you. Spiders can be very helpful. P. P is for praying mantis. It is called a praying mantis because it looks like it is kneeling and praying. Gardeners and farmers like them because they eat pesty bugs that are harmful to vegetables and other plants. We have many of these at hay ground in the, in the garden. Q is for queen bee. In a beehive, there's only one queen bee. She can lay thousands of eggs per day. All of the other bees in the hive take good care of the queen bee. R. R is for Red Admiral. This butterfly is not bright red like an apple or a cherry. It is a rusty orange color. Red Admirals are very difficult to catch because they fly fast and erratically. S. S is for Scorpion. Scorpions are really scary looking. They have two front pinchers, just like lobsters. At the end of their tails, they have stingers. Would you like to be stung by a scorpion? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I know, I have a friend who was stung by one and it hurt a lot. T, T is for tarantula. The tarantula is a big furry spider. It can grow to be as large as your hand. Tarantulas and scorpions are found in warm climates. U. U is for unfinished painting. On this page, the illustrator forgot to finish painting the paper. Wait a minute. I don't think I know of an unfinished painting bug. Let's find out what's going on here. Ah, U. U is for unicorn beetle. Okay, that's better. Now the illustrator has finished the painting. The unicorn beetle has a single horn sticking out of its head. Do you guys think it looks like a unicorn? V is for velvet mite. These creatures are red and so small that you can hardly see them. About 30 of them could fit on the fingernail of your thumb. Take a look at your thumb and imagine it being covered with 30 little red bugs. W. W is for water spider. This spider makes its home underwater. It weaves a special web which allows it to bring air under the water. It catches and eats things that swim or float nearby. This is one of my favorite book, um, bugs in the book. It's almost like it's a little submarine around it. X is for the marking on the back of this bug. We could not find a bug whose name began with the letter X. This bug is called a cotton stainer. Y is for yellow plant bug. This bug is very easy to see because it is a bright color. It has six legs, just like all other insects. Z is for zillions of zebra butterflies. Zillions of them flying all at once would be a beautiful sight to see. Now that we have gone through the alphabet, on this page are some wicked icky bugs. I don't know exactly why they're wicked, they don't tell us, but it would be interesting to find out. Although the general public considers every creature in this book a bug, in fact, only the yellow plant bug and the cotton stainer are true bugs. The orb weaver, water spider, and tarantula are spiders. 
the velvet mite and the scorpion are arachnids. The rest, including the true bugs, are insects. All right, so I'm gonna end with the icky bug alphabet book. I really enjoyed it, I hope you did too. And I wanted to make um, my own bug. I was inspired by Tanner who made a flying spider, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I've pre-cut some shapes just to speed it along so you don't have to sit and watch for too long. But this is the shape I made for the body. Let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So do you guys remember what that's called? An octagon. The octagon body is gonna have some legs and I cut out some really cool shapes out of some gold paper and I'm using masking tape to stick everything together. So I put on one leg and I put on the other leg. So this could be the top or the bottom. I think I'm gonna make it the bottom so it looks like it's kind of running in <laughs> a funny way. And then I have two long legs and I'm gonna use this tape that I left here Although it's not very sticky, but I'll do my best. Gotta always do your best. Now it has three legs. And now it's gonna have another leg. So I'm gonna give my bug four legs, which is quite unusual, because usually insects have six legs, spiders and arachnids have eight. Mine is a weird bug. It's gonna have only four legs because I wanna leave room for wings so we can fly. I'm going to get my trusty masking tape, pull off a piece larger than I need so I can have a little bit of extra right there, and one wing will go on this side. <laughs> There's one wing, and then my other wing, which I cut out, and I just made kind of a, a raggedy sort of shape, which looked wing-like to me, remember. You are the inventor of this bug. So now we have a pretty cool body with arms, sort of like arms and legs and wings. And I, I had already made the head because I made it earlier and then I had to take it apart. So this is the head that I came up with. Anything goes with the head probably. So I will add that here with some more tape. Here is my icky bug. And I have not come up with a name for it. So if you would like to come up with a name for it, you're welcome to do so. I might add some polka dots later on today when I have some more time to do some more work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And I really look forward to seeing everybody on Friday because I miss you guys quite a bit. All right, see you later.